remember when he talked about doing a, a dance show with black people and myself and a lot of other people looked at him like he was crazy. He said, I'm going to be a black Dick Clark. And I said, you're crazy. He said, you watch me. You know, the world was changed because of Don Cornelius. I mean, not just black folks, but white folks learned how to dance. They were in front of the TV just as much as we were. Every time it came on, everything stopped in my house. He really showed the broadcast television industry. He really showed advertisers that, hey, black folks, we're a big business. But he didn't get the publicity that a lot of people got. And I think when people go back and really take a look at Don over the 35 years, there was nobody like him. Who introduced us to so many great artists for the first time, gave them a place to go to when they couldn't go anywhere else. A person who was articulate, well-dressed, and best of all, at the end of the show, when the credits rolled, it was a Don Cornelius production. Anybody you can think of who is black, who works in television, and who has, who owns the show, and who has the title of executive producer, came after Soul Train. For she is the queen. She is the unbelievable Aretha Franklin. Eighth wonder of the world. Let's get some hands together for Mr. Stevie Wonder. Welcome back those super tough teenage recording artists. Fabulous eyes, Negro. No one is more deserving of such a tribute. The full James Brown story is far greater than we could have. Mighty old James. Bet your last money, it's all gonna be a stone gas, honey. And now let's welcome aboard probably the greatest entertainer in the world, Mr. James Brown. Mama didn't cuss, they didn't miss a whole lot of fuss. But when we did it wrong, Papa beat the hell out of us. Get down! Papa do, Papa do, Papa do, Papa do, Papa do, Papa do. Papa don't take no mess. Oh, yes, sir. Don Cornelius, one of America's hippest hosts, built his empire in the entertainment industry with his weekly television show, Soul Train. Don Cornelius was a very innovative, um, aggressive, uh, positive uh, individual in our entertainment industry. He literally cornered the market on, uh, on urban entertainment televised. He showed us that being who we are is beautiful. We didn't have to change who we were to be accepted. You knew he didn't have no no whack artists. Like you had to be talented to even be on that show. And once he co-signed it, oh you were selling records. It's it's one of those things where he had an impact on me not only growing up but also even my mom growing up. I mean his impact on generations of people um, is really, really amazing. Soul Train nationally syndicated television shows brought fashion and music to the dance floor and in the home of African Americans around the world. It was the one show that we could say was just totally ours. It changed how America looked at music and it changed uh, how America looked at, looked at us, uh, looked at how we create and what we contribute to society and Soul Train really set the tone for that. Right now, let's welcome aboard what, in my opinion, is fast becoming the most exciting musical attraction in the business. How about it, gang, for Shaka Khan and Rufus? I just want to say this back, though you're not mine, I can't deny it. Don't you hear me talking, baby? Love if it wasn't for Soul Train, I don't think any of us singers would have a career right now. He brought good music to the masses, you know what I'm saying, period. Don Cornelius, I think, is probably responsible for a lot more careers than he's ever been given credit for. A lot of people know about the um, platform that he provided for musical artists, but they don't realize that he gave so many opportunities to folks behind the scenes as well. Well, you know, Soul Train just didn't touch the black community. Soul Train was everywhere, you know, in a time where uh, we weren't really on TV like that. I remember one of my cats he said in prison they counted soul trains. 
by how you were getting out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, you know, I got 52 soul trains. That's a year. In my brain, if I could go to Oz to see the wizard, it's the same thing with Soul Train is. Really, honestly, because it was a fantasy world that was, but in this case, it's actually for real. There's no other show like that, period, to this day, since and before. Michael, I'm gonna ask you to do one of my favorite things of many, many beautiful things you've done, and it's uh, with a child's heart, okay? Okay, thank you, I'll be happy to. All right, how about it for Michael? Well, when I first met Don, you know, Don was, he had to get to know you. I remember, looking at him and feeling like, wow, this is the legend. My dad is actually James Alexander uh, of the Barcades, and so, you know, uh, he's, of course, he's been on Soul Train numerous times, and uh, was a really good friend of Don. He introduced me to Don Cornelius when I was like, uh, I, was, I had to be about eight years old. He saw me, I, he'd always remember, I guess that was one of his things, he, he just had to remember all these people. You know, he was like, that's little James, he called me little James. He didn't know I was Faye, but he acknowledged me. He was like, Lil' James, I see you, boy. You know, <laughs> look just like your daddy. I saw this jacket that just had all the bells and whistles on it, right? And um, he said, you know, Ray, you, you can't wear everything you like. And so, you know, I got a little bit upset about it. And later on, after I got back to Chicago, two weeks later, there's that jacket in the mail. And with a card saying, I liked it too. <laughs> He was very kind, uh, uh, very truthful, and very honest. And uh, when I say that this could very well be the best man in the business, it's not a stage joke. You're going to come back and drop the bomb on us later in the show, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, bam. We did our performance, and I was just down there, just I slapped five, and he was like, he's calmly walked up on stage, whispering in my ear, we don't fraternize. Stars don't fraternize with the audience. <laughs> He was such a serious person. I remember feeling like, yes, yes, Mr. Cornelius. <laughs> he was uh, a class act, and he, he carried himself like that. And I believe that most of the entertainers that, that performed in the show took that with them and held themselves in that type of esteem that he did, that type of confidence, that type of uh, uh, swag. I mean, I remember um, him interviewing Chaka Khan. He was like a family friend. We'd already had a history. This lovely lady to my right is uh, the incredible Shaka Khan. Hi, Shaka. Hello, how are you? Always nice to see you. How have you been? I would tell you, but... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> we, ought, we ought to redo this, but I'm going to keep on going. He always approached me on the show, like, I know you, okay? And I know, <laughs> I've been knowing you since you was a kid. And you really listen to him because he said some really profound stuff. You know, you'd be laying back and he, you know, say, uh, some label treating you right. You know, and it's like, yeah, Don, you know, you know, I'm good, you know, I'm good. And then he'll wait for a second, make sure you watch your money. He was an expert on any number of subjects. He was so full of knowledge that it was amazing. And I have to say that Don was one of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. I think the thing that we were probably most glad at is that Don liked us, who seemed like he didn't like nobody. And you are? Kenny Edmonds. Kenny? L.A. I'm D. Carlos. And I'm K.O. Uh, is there any reason why uh, you fellas all look alike? It was, uh, it was a cool thing to, to, to be there and, and be in his presence, because he was a scary dude. Don Cornelius could be intimidating, actually. <laughs> Walking in a room is like, wow. I stuttered a little bit. I you know, didn't know what to say to him, you know. That's one of the few figures in life from which I actually, I get quiet as a church mouse. The first time I met Don Cornelius, I could say I met a man, for real. I was like, that's a man right there. He yeah. was strong, he was convicted, he was, he was stylish. He, he was all that image that you believe a man should have. You know, his aura is very, uh, it's very laid back, but very, you know, strong. And you can tell right away, he's not really the type of person that you want to just go up and say, hey, Don, you know, how's it going? He was an intimidating presence. Don Cornelius is like right there, you know what I'm saying? He's like, hey, man, I've been listening to your song, man. I like your song, man. I was like, man, thank you, man. And then he walks away slowly like the guy, by the way. Is that it? <laughs> and it was funny because even if you did good at this show, he would never, he would never clap, ever.
He wasn't doing none of that. If you ever watch the show, or you see Don, he'd just be like this. Yeah. Play poker face. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, <laughs> new tradition. <laughs> I get the deep voice so Freddy. You know, are you ever gonna move it up? Do it a little faster? Are you, are you gonna always stay with the balance? And I was like, well, it ain't broken, so I'm not gonna fix it. You know, I'm gonna keep it just like he says. I think you need to add a little something, a little, a little faster on it. And so that's when I came up with Jam Tonight. I remember once having a conversation with Don Cornelius too. Don, uh, I was working with Arrested Development at the time, production manager, and Speech wanted to have some homeless people on stage for Mr. Wendell. Don Cornelius came up to me, he pulled me off to the side, and he was like, look here, young bro. This is Soul Train, and we're not gonna have no homeless people on my stage. When I would go on set, I would see whenever my grandpa walked into a room, everyone was just in awe. It's like everyone was just like, oh my gosh, it's Don. And you kind of just hear this voice, because you know he got the only bass, baritone, whatever voice, almost like James Earl Jones, and you like, ooh, is that God the Oz? And I turned around and he's like this, and he just pretty much was like, peace, y'all, have a good show. And I walked out, we was like, oh my God, the Wizard of Oz has spoken, that was Don Cornelius. The first time I met Don Cornelius, I was like, man, he a pimp. I mean, he was sharp, he was real clean, like Rico Suave, you know, real debonair dude. He made me feel so special because he walked me to my dressing room. He was the cleanest guy with a big afro that I ever met in my whole life. The afro was huge at the time. You know, he had, everybody had a big afro, but then what, you know, I think Don had the, the biggest. Perfect, round afro, by the way. It was tough to get back in, in those days with this voice. And he seemed to know everyone. Everyone that came on his shows, like they, they were paying homage to him. And that he, so obviously this guy had to be the man since all these people were coming on his show. One of the first black men I ever saw driving around in a Rolls Royce Corniche with the top down. He was like the closest thing for me that came to a black 007. Don didn't only just bring entertainment, you know, into everybody's home on a weekly basis for 35 years, um, showcasing the finest talent, the finest music. Don Canis as a producer, um, it, it was a trailblazer. He has it's millions of people saying, well, I, might not, I may not be able to do what Don did, but I just want to come close. Coming up next, Don Cornelius joins the police force, and a typical traffic stop is the beginning of his television career. <laughs>